This video will introduce various concepts related to electromagnetic induction. We will describe the principles of electromagnetic induction and show how an EMF can be induced in a conductor. We will define a quantity called magnetic flux before moving on to state Lenz's law, where we will show the process of determining the correct direction of the induced EMF. Recall that when an electric charge moves perpendicularly to a magnetic field, a force acts on the charge. This means that when a conductor moves perpendicular to a magnetic field, the charges within it will experience a force. Let's imagine that we have a conducting rod that will move to the right across a magnetic field that acts into the page. As the rod is conducting, it will have many free electrons, so these electrons will also move from left to right with the rod. If we now use the right hand slap rule and remembering that electrons are negatively charged, the force on the electrons will be directed downwards as the rod moves through the magnetic field. As a result, an excess of electrons will accumulate at the bottom end of the rod, making it negatively charged. And the deficit of electrons at the top end of the rod will make the top end positively charged. A potential difference now exists between the ends of the rod. Moreover, an EMF has been induced across the length of the conducting rod. This is an example of electromagnetic induction, which is a phenomenon that occurs when an EMF is induced due to the relative motion between a conductor and a magnetic field. Now let's expand this idea of a moving rod to a moving rectangular loop of conducting wire. Suppose that this loop is moving downwards into a uniform external magnetic field that points out of the screen. When the leading edge of the loop enters the magnetic field, Forces will act on the free electrons in the leading edge. Using the right hand slap rule, electrons will be pushed to the right hand side, making the left hand side of the leading edge positively charged. This induces an EMF in the loop and results in a clockwise induced conventional current while the loop moves into the magnetic field. When the loop moves completely within the field, magnetic forces will also act on the free electrons in the trailing edge of the loop. As with the leading edge, electrons will be pushed to the right hand side, making the left hand side of the trailing edge positively charged. But since this is a uniform magnetic field, the induced EMFs on both the leading edge and trailing edge will have the same magnitude. These EMFs cancel each other out, and no current will be induced in the loop while it moves completely within the magnetic field. However, as the loop exits the field, only three electrons in the trailing edge experience magnetic forces. This induces an EMF in the loop, but this now results in an anti-clockwise induced current around the loop, which is the opposite direction to when the loop entered the magnetic field. Now notice how the times when a current has been induced in the loop, there has been a changing number of magnetic field lines passing through the inside of the loop. Conversely, when there is a constant or zero number of magnetic field lines passing through the inside of the loop, there has been no current. This observation is linked to a quantity called magnetic flux, and the current can only be induced when we have a closed loop of wire and the flux in the loop changes. Before we define magnetic flux, let's recall that the magnetic field strength is proportional to the density of magnetic field lines. When the field lines are close together, there will be many field lines through a given area, and we have a strong magnetic field. In particular, we use the term magnetic flux density as a measure of the density of the magnetic field lines passing through a unit area of one square meter, and this is a more formal name for magnetic field strength. With this in mind, the quantity magnetic flux, denoted with a capital phi, is a measure of how much of a magnetic field passes perpendicularly through a given area. If we consider the following diagram, we have a surface of area A that is tilted from a face-on orientation to the magnetic field by an angle theta. The magnetic flux through the surface can be calculated with the following equation. In particular, B is the magnetic flux density, A is the area of the given surface, and the angle theta is measured between the direction of the magnetic field and the direction normal to the given surface. Magnetic flux has units of waivers, and from this equation, one waiver is defined as the magnetic flux through a surface of one square meter perpendicular to a magnetic flux density of one tesla. 
Magnetic flux can be intuitively seen as the number of the magnetic field lines that cut through the surface. We can deduce that the magnetic flux is maximised when the magnetic field is perpendicular to the area of the surface, as all of the magnetic field lines will cut through the surface. Note here that the normal to the surface is parallel to the magnetic field, so the angle theta will be equal to 0 degrees. On the opposite end, the magnetic flux through a surface will be zero when the magnetic field is perfectly aligned with the plane of the surface, because the surface is not pierced by any magnetic field lines. Magnetic flux is important to electromagnetic induction because the change in magnetic flux with time will cause an EMF to be induced in a closed loop of conducting wire. If we consider this circular loop of conducting wire and place a bar magnet near the loop, then some of the magnetic field lines from the magnet would pass through the loop of wire, so there would be magnetic flux through the circular loop. But even with this arrangement, if both the magnet and the wire remain stationary, then there would be no induced EMF in the loop because the magnetic flux is constant. If the magnet is set in motion and remains in motion while the wire remains stationary, the magnetic flux through the loop will change over time and an EMF will be electromagnetically induced in the loop of wire. This induced EMF is always generated, and will result in an induced current as we have a closed loop. It is also possible for the magnet to be stationary while the loop of wire moves in any direction, and this will also induce an EMF in the wire. As long as there is a relative motion between the magnetic field and the conducting loop, then there will be a changing magnetic flux and an EMF will be induced in the conducting wire. We can calculate the magnitude of the induced EMF from electromagnetic induction using Faraday's law of induction, which states that the induced EMF in a closed loop equals the negative of the rate of change of magnetic flux with time through the loop. We will delve into this equation in more detail in another video. But the objective of this video is to focus on the negative sign in this equation. This sign encompasses Lenz's law and is concerned with determining the direction of the induced EMF. In particular, Lenz's law states that the direction of the induced EMF will create a current that opposes the change in magnetic flux that caused the EMF. If we refer back to the example of a magnet moving towards a stationary loop of wire, the magnetic flux inside the loop increases, which induces an EMF that results in an anti-clockwise current around the loop. If we use the right-hand grip rule, and imagine that we grab the wire with our right hand so that the thumb points in the direction of the current, the way our fingers curl around the wire indicates a magnetic field pointing to the left inside the loop towards the bar magnet. This field is opposite to the magnetic field from the bar magnet and so it opposes the increase in magnetic flux that caused the induced EMF. Therefore, this is the correct direction given by Lenz's law. Lenz's law is also directly related to energy conservation. Suppose instead that the induced current around the loop was clockwise, opposite to that given by Lenz's law. The magnetic field produced by this current would point away from the bar magnet which would imply an attraction between a magnet and a loop of wire instead of a repulsion. This would result in the magnet being pulled into the loop of wire, accelerating it to an increasing speed, and gaining kinetic energy with no external energy source. This would be a violation of energy conservation and cannot happen, so the induced current cannot be clockwise in this example. In order to use Lenz's law, we need to have a closed conducting loop of wire with some given area, and a change in magnetic flux needs to be taking place. When these conditions are satisfied, we can use a three-step process to determine the direction of the induced current. To begin, we have to determine whether the magnetic flux inside the loop is increasing or decreasing, and we do this by using the magnetic flux equation that we introduced earlier in this video. After this, we need to determine the direction of flux that needs to be created by the induced current to oppose this change in magnetic flux. Once we know the direction of the induced magnetic field, we can use the solenoid rule to determine the direction of the induced current around the loop. From the solenoid rule, 
If we point the thumb of our right hand in the direction of the magnetic field lines, then the direction in which our fingers curl will give the direction of the current around the loop. So let's apply this procedure and revisit the following example. We have a closed rectangular loop of conducting wire and it is moving downwards into a uniform external magnetic field that points out of the screen. This causes a change in magnetic flux so Lenz's law can be applied. Let's begin with step 1. The area of the loop remains constant and the angle theta remains constant because the loop is not rotating during its motion. However, even though the magnetic field is uniform, the number of magnetic field lines cutting through the loop is increasing. So the magnetic flux out of the screen is increasing. In step 2, we need to oppose this increase in magnetic flux. We can do so by creating a magnetic field that points into the screen, which is in the direction opposite to the external magnetic field. This magnetic field will be produced by the induced current, and we will use step 3 to determine the direction of the induced current that will result in a field pointing into the screen. From the solenoid rule, in pointing our thumb towards the screen, we find our fingers curl clockwise, which means that the induced current must move in a clockwise direction. So we have worked out that this current will oppose the increase in flux caused by moving the loop of wire towards the magnetic field. When the loop is moving completely within the uniform magnetic field, there will be no change in magnetic flux through the loop. This is because the magnetic field, the area of the loop in the magnetic field, and the angle theta remain constant. So the magnetic flux will be constant throughout this motion. Therefore, an EMF will not be induced, so we cannot apply Lenz's law here. Once the wire begins to move out of the external magnetic field, there will be a change in magnetic flux, so we can apply Lenz's law once again. With step 1, we now find that the magnetic flux out of the screen is decreasing, because the number of magnetic field lines cutting through the loop decreases. In step 2, to oppose the decrease in flux, the magnetic field produced by the induced current must point in the same direction to the original magnetic field to resist the decrease in magnetic flux, so it must point out of the screen. Then from step 3, pointing our thumb out of the screen, we find that our fingers curl anticlockwise, so the induced current must move in an anticlockwise direction, which is in the opposite direction to when the loop was entering the magnetic field. Note that the current directions found here match those determined when we first did an analysis of this loop of wire entering and exiting the field. We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. We saw that magnetic flux is a quantity that measures how much of a magnetic field passes perpendicularly through a given area, and it can be calculated with the following equation. When there is a change in magnetic flux with time, an EMF will be induced as given by Faraday's law of induction, and if a closed loop is formed, then the current will also be induced as a result of the induced EMF. We saw that the negative sign in Faraday's law encompasses Lenz's law, which states that the direction of the induced EMF will create a current that opposes the change in magnetic flux that caused the EMF. Finally, we gave a three-step process that can be used to determine the direction of the induced EMF where we note that the correct direction will conserve energy. This now concludes this video on electromagnetic induction and Lenz's law. Thank you for watching.